Whether you believe in demons or not, there have been countless stories and reports throughout history that document demonic possession and exorcisms. Now, while I think most things boil down to mental illness, others truly believe people to be possessed by forces not from our plane of existence, an evil that seeks to destroy. These are the top five real possession cases that shocked the world. Let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have Clara Jermaine Selly. Back in 1906, Clara was a young South African Christian who was said to have been possessed by a demon at the age of just 16 years old. Clara was a student at St. Michael's Mission in Natal, South Africa during this time, and it was at the age of 16 that she was said to have made a pact with Satan, which resulted in demonic possession, supposedly. In an account written by a nun, it was said that Clara could speak many languages, languages that she wasn't capable of speaking prior to her possession. She was also reported to exhibit clairvoyance, with her revealing secrets and transgressions of people she had never met. It was also reported that Clara could not be in the presence of holy or blessed objects, a classic sign of possession. And when she was, she would seem to exhibit extraordinary strength and ferocity. A nun even stated that Clara would make peculiar sounds, stating, I quote, no animal ever made such sounds, neither the lions of East Africa nor the angry bulls. At times it sounded like a veritable herd of wild beasts orchestrated by Satan and formed a hellish choir. Two priests went on to perform an exorcism on Clara, with it lasting approximately two days. During the exorcism, it was said that Clara knocked the Bible out of the priest's hands and even attempted to choke him. By the end of those two days, it was said that the demon was expelled from the girl and that she was healed. Happy days. Before we jump into number four, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Coming in at number four, we have Anna Eklund. Anna Eklund is actually a pseudonym for Emma Schmidt, a woman who was allegedly possessed by a demon with exorcisms occurring over several decades, resulting in one extensive exorcism that took place between August 18th to December 23rd of 1928. Schmidt was born in Switzerland and was raised in a Catholic household in Wisconsin, and on June 18th of 1912, she underwent her first exorcism. After exhibiting signs of possession, including revulsion of holy objects, disturbed thoughts, and inability to enter churches. Now, despite the first exorcism taking place, it appeared to be unsuccessful, with the second exorcism being performed in 1928, with Eklund being moved to a convent after once again exhibiting strange symptoms, including fits of rage, and the inability to be near blessed objects. The second exorcism was reported to be incredibly violent, with Eklund even levitating and howling during it. The first session lasted until August 26th, with the second session occurring between September 13th to September 20th, followed by a final eight-day session that lasted from December 15th to December 23rd. Eklund's body began to deteriorate during this time due to lack of food and constant vomiting. On December 23rd, Father Risinger commanded the demons out of Eklund and seemingly cured her of her possession. Coming in at number three, we have Michael Taylor. Born in 1944, Michael Taylor was a man from the UK who became notable after he alleged that he was possessed by a demon. Taylor reported feeling evil inside of himself, even verbally lashing out during a Christian fellowship group. His behavior continued to become more erratic, with a local vicar turning to other ministers to call out the demon that was supposedly living inside of Taylor. An exorcism took place between October 5th to 6th, with the ministers believing that after an all-night session they had cast the demons out of Taylor. However, they did state that three remained, insanity, murder, and violence. However, Taylor was allowed to go home. When he did return home, though, he brutally murdered his wife and he was found by local police naked in the street and covered in his own blood. At his trial, Taylor was acquitted on grounds of insanity and was sent to Broadmere Hospital for two years before being sent to a secure ward in Bradford before ultimately being released. Jumping forward to 2005, Taylor was once again in the news after touching someone inappropriately, resulting in him once again being ordered in psychiatric treatment. It seems less like the devil and more like a deranged human being who should not be allowed to live among society my opinion, that is. Coming in at number two, we have Annalise Michelle. Annalise, often referred to simply as Anna, was a German woman who was said to have undergone roughly 67 Catholic exorcisms during the year prior to her death. When Anna was 16 years old, she began to experience seizures and was ultimately diagnosed with psychosis caused by temporal lobe epilepsy. 
Not long after that, she was diagnosed with depression and was treated at a hospital. However, by the time Anna turned 18, she began to exhibit violent tendencies. She began hearing voices and was intolerant of religious objects that were around her family's home. Her condition continued to worsen, resulting in a family believing that she was possessed by a demon. The family ultimately turned to the Catholic Church for help with priests being approved to conduct a series of exorcisms on the girl, with the family halting any communication with doctors altogether. During the ordeal, Anna began to stop eating and ultimately passed away from malnourishment and dehydration following 67 gruelling exorcism sessions. The girl's parents and the two Roman Catholic priests were found guilty of negligent homicide and spent six months in prison for their crimes. There are many popular horror movies that took inspiration from this case, including The Exorcism of Emily Rose, as well as Annalise The Exorcist Tapes. And finally, in another one, we have Roland Doe. Now, this case claims our number one spot, and rightfully so, with this true possession case being the story to inspire the movie The Exorcist. Back in the late 40s, a young boy dubbed Roland Doe was alleged to be possessed by a demonic entity, with priests from the Roman Catholic Church performing a series of exorcisms to attempt to expel the demons residing within. Roland Doe was said to be a German Lutheran, with him and his family residing in Cottage City in Maryland. However, according to reports, on one particular occasion, his spiritual aunt allowed him to play with a Ouija board, which may have resulted in his supposed possession. According to reports following the death of Roland Doe's aunt, the family began to experience strange goings on within the home. Noises, furniture moving on its own accord, and ordinary objects levitating. The family ultimately turned to their pastor, Miles Schultz, with him arranging for Roland Doe to spend a night in its home to monitor the boy. Schultz claimed to witness those same goings on within his home when the boy was there. An exorcism was arranged, with documents from that exorcism stating how the boy slipped his hand loose from his restraints and managed to break a bedspring from under his mattress, using it as a weapon to attack the priests. During another exorcism on the boy, it was reported that words such as evil and hell appeared on Roland Doe's body, with the mattress beginning to shake during the ritual. Despite the terrifying goings on after the rite was over, it was said that Roland Doe went on to lead a rather ordinary life. However, like I said, this case shocked the world after William Peter Blatty chose to use elements from the events in his novel, The Exorcist, back in 1971, with the famous story going on to be one of the most successful and famous movies of all time. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any possession cases that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below if I have to do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, Top 5 Most Haunted Places in the World, Part 2. Alea Rose said, I think Chris was commenting on how you said you hair has gotten longer since quarantine. Like, it looked good when it was short compared to now and it looks good now. True, my my hair has gotten longer with quarantine because I can't cut it. Don't remember last time I got a haircut. That's sad. But yeah, it's been long. So long. Diana S said, I'd love to stay at the Myrtle's Plantation. I love ghost stories, but I've only had one encounter. Well, please share with the class. I would not like to stay at the Myrtle's Plantation. No, thank you. Too scary. I'm okay, just not seeking out the ghosts. If they want to seek me out, that's fine. Phoenix Rain said, how about the most haunted places in Canada? I feel like that hasn't been covered much. That's true. We have covered Canadian urban legends, but never haunted places in Canada. Would be a good one. Mkron said, I like how you guys sometimes do these real life lists. More please. Well, this is a real life list. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully we can do more. There's always more to do. Lord Inquisitor Ignis said, how is it that I knew the French names would trip Lucy up? It doesn't take much to trip me up. The names in this script tripped me up, so you were you were right. It's because I don't speak any other language other than the Queen's English. <laughs> Theresa Wright said, Lucy, could you do a video of all the scary places and all the cities you ever lived in? Thank you, and you are my favourite host. Well, thank you. That would be a very good list. I could talk about places in London, Calgary, Toronto, Alaska. That's pretty much it. On that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you.